Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to my channel for another Hot Toys DC 1-6 scale figure unboxing and review video. Now today we are going to be taking a look at the caution tape jacket version of Harley Quinn from Birds of Prey. Now I personally am a big fan of the movie, I know it's not for everyone, but as soon as Hot Toys announced this figure, you bet I was super excited. So yeah, I can't wait to get her out here. Now I got mine from toyswonderland.com, link for that is of course in the description below. They have 12 month installment plans and an awesome reward system. If you do like seeing reviews on Hot Toys figures, why not hit that subscribe and bell notification icon so you're notified as soon as the next review goes live on the channel. What we are going to do now though is get the box laying flat in the light box and do the unboxing. Here of course we have the box art and as you can see there is a significant amount of glare. That's because the entire front cover of the box is done in this gorgeous metallic. You can see a massive image of Harley Quinn on the front of the box. And no, that's not my exposure settings blowing out this image. That's just the way the image has been presented in this really washed out colour palette, which I think works quite nicely for Birds of Prey. You do have the logo down below as well as Booby Trap. On the side you do have Harley Quinn as well as the specific number and name of this version. Birds of Prey once again on the back as well as some crazy wacky Harley Quinn artwork. It's also suitably metallic on the backside. I do love the way this looks. You can flip open the front cover to reveal another image of Harley Quinn saying no one is like me and then a ton more artwork surrounding the figure. But we're not really here to dissect the box art as good as it looks, we're more here to check out the figure herself. Now I personally picked up two versions of this release because I want to have one displayed as so wearing the caution tape jacket, but another wearing the outfit she was in when she attacked the police station. First in hand impressions are suitably positive. I can already tell you that this head sculpt looks far better in hand than it has done in pictures. What we are going to do now though is get all of her accessories laid out in the light box and take a closer look at everything she comes with. Here we have most but not all of the parts and pieces. We do still have to look at the diorama backdrop and we'll do that in just a second. Starting off with the display base first, it's the usual Hot Toys hexagonal base. Harley Quinn on the front and then an absolutely stunning metallic print on the surface. Birds of Prey logo on one side, caution tape in the background and then of course a glossy bright red pair of lips. Up top you do just have a waist clamp. Now this particular version of Harley does have two different looks, so you get a couple of interchangeable outfit options, starting off with her white t-shirt. Now, in the movie, this shirt very clearly said Harley effing Quinn. Now in figure format, Hot Toys weren't able to print that word on this shirt, so it is slightly inaccurate. She does come with the bandolier of paint canisters, and yes, they can be removed and placed in the gun. Now she also comes with a pair of white boots, they simply clip into place onto the existing ankle pegs, and you'll see them on the figure a little bit later on in the video. She also comes with these gauntlet pieces, I guess. I think she's painted these herself with multiple different hand imprints in different colours. It's something wacky, something different that perfectly suits Harley. She also comes with a belt that has a real metal padlock up front and a keyhole down below. That is a very nice touch and some crazy attention to detail by Hot Toys. Now the last piece that's kind of meant to go with the secondary look is the fun gun. It has different decals on both sides and it's detailed to the nines. You can also swivel the piece up top and open up the gun and then place some paint canisters in the barrel. I didn't expect that to be a thing but I'm super glad that Hot Toys went all out with this weapon. You also get a baseball bat. 
This one I'm a little bit disappointed in. I think Hot Toys could have added some pitting, maybe some dents, some scratches here and there to make it slightly more realistic, because as it stands, it looks slightly cartoony. Something that doesn't look cartoony, though, is the egg sandwich. This looks very realistic. The aluminium foil is just plastic and it's painted to look like foil, but it looks super real. Now, the egg part up top is a little bit more basic, but when you have her holding this, I think a lot of people are going to have this as their primary display option in the collection. She also comes with multiple different chains. Now, they are made of real metal and all of the tags are fully detailed, including the dog tag that does say Bruce. Lastly, you get a full array of Harley Quinn gesturing hands. They do have unique individual rings for each side, and they do have nail polish with detail on the surface. Plus, for the police station assault look, you get the hand wraps which match up perfectly with her gauntlets. What we are going to do now, though, is get the diorama backdrop out here and take a closer look. Just like previously released figures that have come with cardboard backdrops, this is done in the exact same way. It's rather tall, you do have these stand pieces made of cardboard on either side, they are nice and sturdy. And then on the front, you have an absolutely gorgeous metallic print. The metallic that they're using on the box art, the display base, and the backdrop, it just works so nicely. It's the pop of color and bling that will help this Harley stand out in the display. Plus a Birds of Prey logo front and center, and a couple of icons dotted around the edges. Don't worry though, you will be seeing this behind the figure a little bit later in the video. What we are going to do now though, is get Harley Quinn herself out here and take a closer look. Here we have her standing straight up and down in the light box, no crazy poses or accessories or anything like that. And for the most part, I am very happy. Is she perfect? No, there are a couple of things that we do need to discuss, but I think she's a darn sight better than a lot of people are saying. I love the head sculpt, I really like the outfit, especially that caution tape jacket. It could have gone horribly wrong. I can't imagine this thing was easy to produce. Those tassels that drape down perfectly but are still really thin and light could have frayed out and looked ridiculous. But they don't. They look great. It all comes together very nicely and we haven't even looked at the second outfit option yet which might actually be my preferred option of the two. We will do that though in just a second. What we are going to do now is take her off the rotating turntable, punch in and take a closer look at the details. Here we have her up close and personal. Now in just a second we will be switching out the various components to check out the police station look for Harley. But before we do that, we do have to address this. The biggest complaint by a lot of collectors. The single jointed exposed knees. Now this is nothing new. They've used this exact same body with the Suicide Squad Harley Quinns in the various formats they came out in. So I wasn't super surprised to see this here. I think I know why they did it. Tattoos. I don't think they have the technology to print these tattoos on seamless legs. So I'm fairly certain this was the only viable option. I personally am okay with it. Would I have preferred Seamless? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. It would have looked way better. But these don't take away enough from the figure for me to warrant not picking her up because there is so much to love here. Starting off with the head sculpt, initially, I didn't love this. The promo pics didn't wow me. But seeing it in hand is something else entirely. I now really like this head sculpt. The skin texture, the paint applications, the expression with that devious smile, and also the likeness to Margot Robbie, which I thought was missing initially. Now I also like the darker shading to the roots up on the top for her hair and the individually articulated pigtails, plus the fully sculpted in earrings on both sides. They can't have been an easy thing to sculpt traditionally, but that's exactly what they did, and they look awesome. 
She also has the real metal chains. The only complaint I have with them is that they do like to bunch up, which makes her neck look a little bit short. You could always remove a couple of them, and I might just do that because I don't love the short necked look. One thing that I do love though is the caution tape jacket. The main body of the jacket is made of this clear material which is super accurate and you do have a real working belt and zipper up the front. I also like that the belt folds over itself and drapes naturally rather than sticking out and going everywhere. That is a very nice touch. So too are the sleeves. You can actually make out the caution wording on the caution tape and the various different layers and colours of tassels work perfectly for this particular version of Harley. It looks exactly like the caution tape jacket from the movie. She also has her sports bra up on top and they've done a very clever thing here. There is an exposed joint for her midsection and because she is wearing that sports bra, they can leave it exposed, but it's not super obvious. It looks almost seamless. She also has her suspenders, which do peg in around the back to an actual pegboard. That will come into play when you do switch the outfit out for the police station look. As for the shorts, these do look suitably homemade, with the various stars that have been very clearly painted on and the stripes down the front. They look Great, no complaints at all from me. She does of course have the various tattoos including the I heart put in that's been crossed out and then coming down to the boots, these look good but they're not super accurate. They're actually supposed to be clear boots just like the material on her jacket and the colour is supposed to come from the socks underneath, they're these sequin style socks. Nevertheless, I don't have a huge issue with how they've done this, it looks suitably accurate from a distance, and doing translucent boots with socks underneath at 1-6 scale definitely wouldn't have been easy. But for those of you wondering what the police station outfit looks like, what a transformation. This now looks like a completely different figure. But in saying that, changing out the outfit has now exposed the single jointed elbows. This is going to be the bane of a lot of people's existence I know. Seamless arms would have been a great option. But once again, the tattoos are printed on the arms themselves, so I don't think that Hot Toys could have actually done that. They decided to go jointed, which I'm okay with. It means I can now have her holding the gun and not have to worry about creasing or cracking of any seamless arms. Now on her upper torso, we've switched out the caution tape jacket for her Harley Quinn shirt. It's a very thin and light material, so you can see her sports bra underneath, which is accurate to the movie. She also has the bandolier with the various paint canisters of different colours. Then coming down, she does have the wraps on her forearms that can move up and down ever so slightly. So if you do want to hide a little bit more of those elbow joints, yes, you can push them up, but then you expose the wrist pegs. So either way, one of those joints is going to be exposed. She also has her belt with the padlock up front that velcros into place along the back there. And you do just have to pull the suspenders off her arms. Follow the instructions, it tells you exactly how to achieve this particular look. Then lastly, she has her white boots down below. As I said earlier, I really like the sculpt of these. They look realistic and they are accurate to the movie. Overall, so far, yes, even though there are some drawbacks, I'm still really impressed with Harley. For those wondering, yes, if you do own the booby trap battle version in the gold dungarees, you can use that head sculpt on this body. I like the slightly more serious expression for this particular outfit. It means that when she's blasting cops with her paint canisters, I think this head sculpt suits. The big grin is cool too, 
but this might just be my new favourite option for the display. Now for a quick side by side comparison, here we have the two display options for this particular version of Harley. You get everything you need for either of the two options in the box and I love that. These two look great together. I am so glad I picked up two of this figure, that way I can have both looks permanently on display. Now I haven't quite yet picked my favourite. I know, it's a bit of a cop-out answer, but I think I like both equally. Let me know which of the two you prefer though, I'm curious, is it the caution tape or the police station version? Next up here we have Suicide Squad Harley, and these two look drastically different from one another. I thought initially they were using the exact same body, but they aren't. The new one is taller but also slimmer. I'm not quite sure which of the two is more accurate to Margot Robbie as Harley Quinn, you'll have to let me know down below, but either way I still think they look good in their own right. I love the Suicide Squad one for the super expressive head sculpt and the awesome accessories, but I also really like this new one. And lastly, here we have Harley alongside her Puddin, the purple coat Joker. She is significantly taller, but then again she is wearing heels. The body itself is also upscaled, as we've discussed based on the Suicide Squad Harley. Is this height difference bothering me? No, not really. But I know some people that will potentially get upset by this, because having accurate heights between your figures is still very important. These two aren't going to be displayed next to each other on the same shelf in my display, but if you decide to pick up this Harley as your main Harley Quinn and this Joker as your main Joker, then yes, there is a little bit of a height difference. Just going over articulation. Now bear in mind this is my personal copy of the figure, so I'm going to be a little bit more careful. I'm sure when you get yours in hand, you can push the joints slightly further than I am willing to go. Now starting off with the head sculpt, it is on a ball joint at the base of the head and another at the base of the rubbery neck. Looking forward to there, going back to there, swivel and then pivot side to side. The pigtails are also on swivels. The arms will go up to there on very sturdy ratchets. They will go forward and back and you do get a teeny amount of butterfly up at the shoulder. A single bend at the elbow that gets you to 90 and also incorporates a swivel plus a regular 1 6 scale wrist peg. You do have a ball joint at the midsection and another joint down there at the waist, crunching forward to there, going back to there, swivel and then pivot side to side. The legs will go forward to about there, they will go out to there, swivel at the upper thigh, a single bend at the knee that does get you to 90 and surprisingly also goes forward, plus it does incorporate a swivel. Lastly, a double ball peg down here for the ankle. Just going over the three cool and three annoying things. The first annoying thing, and by the way this isn't a big deal for me, but I know it is for a lot of people, it's the exposed joints, both down here at the knees and up here at the elbows. If you do have her wearing the caution tape jacket, then the only joints you have to worry about seeing are the knees. I'm actually fine with it and I'll explain why, because I can now have her posed in a dynamic pose for the long haul. I don't have to worry about creasing or cracking of silicon skin, so for me yes, I am okay with it, but if it's not for you, I totally understand. The second annoying thing has to do with the hand selection. For some reason they decided to only give her a trigger finger hand and a gripping hand for the left side, plus a bat holding hand with the wraps on. I would have appreciated some fists or some neutral hands just so I can have a ton more options. Having only three hands for this particular look is a little bit restrictive. The third annoying thing is the accuracy of the t-shirt. In the movie, it very clearly said Harley effing Quinn. Now I totally understand why Hot Toys weren't able to do that, because printing swear words on your 1-6 scale figures is a no-no, but it still means that this shirt isn't quite accurate. The first cool thing is that Hot Toys decided to include all of the outfit pieces required to create an accurate police station version of Harley Quinn. That means you don't have to go out and pick up a standalone version, you have everything you need right 
in the box. The second cool thing is the caution tape jacket. I love the way this looks. It's such a wacky, crazy concept, but it's been executed very well by Hot Toys. The third cool thing is the backdrop. It's simple, yet very effective. It stands nice and straight, it's colourful, it's metallic, it's a pop of colour in the display that works very nicely with Harley. Just wrapping up on the caution tape jacket version of Harley Quinn from Birds of Prey. Now I told you all at the start of the video, I love the movie and I'm not going to apologise for it. But if you don't, I totally understand. That's probably going to influence your buying decisions on whether or not to pick up this figure. I think though that even if you didn't like the film, this figure might be worth taking a look at. It's something different, it's still Harley Quinn at the end of the day, she comes with multiple outfit options, and that caution tape jacket is something else. It's bright, it's colourful, it's fun, and it will spruce up the display because the DCEU at times can be rather dark and gloomy. This is a nice pop of colour, plus it's Harley Quinn. Who doesn't love Harley? The accessories are great, and the head sculpt is on point. It might just be my new favourite Harley Quinn head sculpt. Initially, I wasn't impressed with the likeness, but seeing it in hand, yeah, it's a marked improvement. Now, the body and the exposed joints I know is going to upset a lot of people. And I get it. In certain poses for me it works, in others it looks a little bit horrendous. But at the end of the day, I still think the figure is greater than the sum of her parts. Now as I said at the start, I got mine from ToysWonderland.com. Link for that is in the description below. They have 12 month installment plans and an awesome reward system. While you're down there, check out the link to Six Scale Network, the Facebook group. Come along, chat figures, share photos of your collection, and of course, see what's coming up next on the channel. Like, comment and subscribe and we'll catch you in the next video.